Ludlow, California. Ludlow is home to quite a few abandoned ramshackle houses and countless rusted cannibalized vintage cars. Ludlow even has its own pioneer cemetery. Like many ghost towns, what Ludlow has the most of is wealth of history, and because it's located right smack dab in the center of the Mojave Desert, there is no shortage of scorching hot days either. The year of 1882 saw the founding of the town of Ludlow, brought about by the establishment of the Southern Pacific Railroad, May 4, 1897, when it became the Santa Fe Railway. This was the main line in connection with Los Angeles. Nearly a quarter of a century later in 1900, the Baghdad Chase Mine was discovered about 10 miles to the south. This would be the one time, right? Bunch of fire shovels and shit. Stuff. that house. That's that house. And this is this direction.
In 1905, the Tonopah and Tidewater Railroad was started mainly for transportation of ore from Beatty, Nevada. This line transported mixed baggage and included a passenger car. W.W. W. Cahill was superintendent and lived aboard this private car on a line in Ludlow. He used this car for administrative offices. The presence of Cahill and his crew, plus all the railroad workers and miners from Baghdad, created much activity around Ludlow, which became the junction and headquarters for all the surrounding area. The first school contract was signed August 10, 1905. Cliffy Hoffman, the first teacher, received a salary of $60 a month. A tent structure with board walls halfway up was the first schoolhouse. There were six original pupils, later the attendance reached 40, with two teachers. A United States Post Office was founded in 1902, originally called STAG, in honor of an engineer on the Tonopah and Tidewater Railroad. This office was officially changed to Ludlow in 1926. The post office was discontinued in 1974.
In 1913, Ludlow considered two blocks of business establishments. Contained within this area were two general merchandise stores, three cafes, a pool hall, a barber shop, and two rooming houses. The Murphy brothers, originally from Tecopa, were prominent Ludlow residents. Tom had a store and cafe in Ludlow, while Mike conducted a like business in Tonopah. The brothers had a business relationship with Matilda Ma Preston, which resulted in accusations of battery in a civil lawsuit, which Ma won. Ironically, she later sold her store to the Murphy brothers before leaving town. In 1915, there was a cross-country automobile race from Los Angeles to Phoenix, Arizona. People from Death Valley came to Ludlow to view the race. Barney Oldfield was the main attraction, being a top auto racer in the nation. The entire day was like a county fair. Ludlow continued to prosper and through World War I, the Tonopah and Tidewater Railroad remained in operation on its now 250 mile route. However, on June 14, 1940, it ceased all runs. In 1962, the Cameron Friend family purchased the town site. Lack of water still made living in Ludlow very costly. So Cameron Friend water witched the area. A well was drilled and good water was found at 650 feet down. Today there are three wells producing good water in Ludlow. The friend family continues. Ludlow is a ghost town of two eras. It was also a rest stop for weary travelers around Route 66, National Trails Highway. Interstate 40, also known as Needles Freeway, was built in the 1970s.
Project Carryall. In 1962, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway began planning a new railway between Needles and Barstow through the Bristol Mountains in California. The straighter, more level route would be 15 miles shorter than the old line, shaving 50 minutes off the trip, but getting through the mountains would require either drilling a tunnel or excavating a new pass. The railway judged the cost of doing either with conventional means to be prohibitive. So in December of 1962, the Santa Fe Railway contacted the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, AEC, to ask if the job could be instead done with hydrogen bombs. It looks like what, what, whatever was here, whatever was, whatever was here, was about completely burnt up. That's what it was. The excavation program's primary objective was digging a sea level replacement for the Panama Canal. The California Department of Public Works, DPW, was also planning a new road through the area to shorten US Highway 66, and they joined the project as well. The AEC, DPW, and the railway together published a feasibility study in November of 1963 proposing to use 23 nuclear bombs totaling 1,830 kilotons to blast a new pass through the Bristols. They called the plan Project Carryall. Twenty-two devices of 20 to 200 kilotons yield would be let off 340, 780 feet underground. The explosions would remove 68 million cubic yards of earth, creating roughly parabolic cut 11,000 feet long, 360 feet deep, and from 600 to 1,300 feet wide. The California Highway Division dropped out of Carryall in September of 1966, unwilling to wait any longer. Projects Buggy and Schooner were finally fired in 1968. The biggest project, Galley, a five-bomb row charge blast that would be almost a rehearsal for Carryall, never took place. The Carryall project was never formally shut down, but the study was put on hold in 1965, and its last official mention was in May of 1970. The plowshare excavation program itself was terminated in 1975. The new pass was eventually dug by more traditional means. Bridge failure closes Route 66 indefinitely from Ludlow to Amboy. More bridges on Route 66 apparently have failed in recent days east of Ludlow, California, closing the historic highway to the hamlet of Amboy, California. On top of the closed portion of Route 66 from Essex, California to Amboy, that leaves no direct Route 66 access to Amboy, the east and west of the village. The only access to Amboy is via 17 miles of Kell Baker Road from Interstate 40 to the north, or on Amboy Road to 29 Palms, California to the south. According to a San Bernardino County road closure site, bridges between Amboy and Ludlow failed on May 12th. It states it is unknown when the bridges can be repaired to resume traffic. 
Flash flooding wiped out the 1930s era bridges in 2014 and 2017 between Essex and Amboy. The county has been trying to collect various funds to repair them, but the sheer number of bridges affected has made getting all the repairs done difficult. Until the Ludlow to Amboy and Essex to Amboy stretches are reopened, Roy's and Amboy will continue to struggle more than ever.